Ho ho, and welcome to another video here on Troy Hackman. We're gonna work with day 11 today. It's uh, Active Directory Day, and today we're gonna go ahead and misuse a server. Now, we're gonna use both the attack box and we're gonna use the opened up window here for the actual window machine. Now, because this is a need two different windows to do this, uh, and I didn't really want to install the actual tool needed, so I used the attack box today. Usually I would start up my own machine, but we're going to use a tool called Evil Win RM, which is a specific exploitation tool for Active Directory. I haven't installed that on my Linux Kali, at least not what I know of, so I just decided to use the attack box instead. Now, if you follow the tutorial here, you're going to go ahead and go to the enumeration part where you are tasked to execute a few commands, and I'm going to do that right now. So, let's go to the machine, open up Windows PowerShell, and I already fixed a particular size so you can see what I'm actually doing. Go ahead and just copy paste different commands, going to the desktop, make sure you execute the PowerShell EP bypass so you can uh, 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 you bypass default policy for arbitrary PowerShell script execution because you're going to execute the PS1 script right there Just a second. That is a script lying right there, which is the PS1 script. The PS1 is the format for power uh, Shell scripts and there's a big script inside of here that's created uh, to find uh, different kind of interesting domains. It is created by Guy uh, I don't remember his name, but anyways Go ahead and paste that. So now we enable that. We can go ahead and run our interesting domain commands. Running the individual commands here will just show you the same things. At the end of the day, this one is going to give you. You're going to find uh, interesting domains and output actual domain names. Also, some users we're going to go ahead and find and use. So run this command. It's going to take a while. And with that, you're going to hit, uh, get an output of different kind of uses, for example, like that, that we need to use. Um, this is Active Directory. It's not one of the biggest skills I have in the world, so I'm a bit on shaky ground here. Anyways, I am somewhat aware of what's going on, and but I wouldn't be exactly sure how to explain this command line right here, just to say that already. So you should definitely go and do some research about that. But I, cannot, I can see that we've got some different names here. One of this is Van Springles, and Van Springles is not a particular name that you usually see on uh, Active Directory servers. Now, using that, and after the actual enumeration, which is this part right here at the top, we can take that name, and go down, which is an instruction domain name for the AC, and do actual exploitation. Exploitation is, is done with a tool called Whisker, created by this guy called Elad Shamir. And <clears throat> in order to execute that, we need to take this line right here and replace the name with the actual, what, what, what we think is a vulnerable domain name. So what we're gonna do now is to take this and put it inside. I actually created that right there. So we're gonna take that, execute it, it will generate some text. You have to be aware of it's gonna fill your screen a bit. What this generates is actually a, an actual executable piece of code. You can take and copy paste, just like that. Copy paste. I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste it. What it executes is a, a file called Rubius, and it's gonna go ahead and ask for ticket, which is a part of how the um, Access system work in Windows Active Directory. So it also it also talks about that somewhere down here, where you're gonna go ahead and pass the hash attack, which is the type of attack we're going to execute on, on Kerberos. Um, and all this is generated the certificate, the password is generated. This is a base 64 string, as you can see, and all that is going to be executed. So we're gonna go ahead and just Make sure that you look at the screen what I do right now. So I add on a dot and a slash because uh, we're gonna execute 
and this, this, is, this is where I am from, and this is where I executed from, because we are standing on the desktop, and on the desktop is the tool called Ruby, so we got there in some way, scroll, sans, I don't know who done it, but someone did it, right? And we can execute <coughs> the Ruby's command from particular where I'm standing. Doing that, will then, the presenter, I did presenter, will then run, and it's gonna take a while to, to run, and let's see, how much? Yes, so Rubius is running right now, and we are generating the ticket, uh, giving the ticket, and actually brute forcing our way in. Well, not brute forcing, we're using the export call, pass the ticket. Really soon, we kind of get some uh, more information around down here, where we can go ahead and copy paste the new given hash for the user, which we're going to need just in a little second. And while we're waiting, I will continue to mark the screen. I also press enter. There we go. All right, so we got the hash already. So one thing you need to be aware of is that all this, yada yada, down here, the important part is the hash. Go ahead and double click it, copy paste that, and make sure that you actually take note of it. Now what you can do right now is to go ahead and make sure that you copy paste that hash, go into try Hackney's window, and give that as the very first answer. Now, there we go. Now we're gonna go ahead and get the actual flag and we need to get a reverse shell going. So, going back to tutorial, need to run this evil win, blah, blah, blah. So we are going to boot up a terminal. There we go, terminal. And we're gonna go ahead and copy paste the evil win something. And after the age right there, we're gonna go ahead and put the actual hash that we got, run it. And this will generate an actual reverse shell for us because now that we run Rubius, we bypass by using pass the hash, and we can now use evil win rm in order to get an actual reverse shell on the machine. Make sure you replace that with the IP address of the machine. Of course, this particular case is for the attack box, which is also talked about right there. Also use the right user when sprinkle, well, domain, user, whatever. Use the right hash that you also got from the attack from before. Now that we have an actual reversal on the machine, we know that this is actually really bad. So having a vulnerable let me show you where I have it right here. Having a vulnerable uh, misconfiguration will actually make, make us do a little bit of fun. Run Rubius, pass the hash, get the use on the hash, and then with Risker, do all the things, and then on our own Linux box, run the tool here called Win Evil WinRM. With that, we can go ahead and see what's going on. Now, I'm gonna go a, a few steps back. Inside the users, we can see the folder called administrator. I'm pretty sure this is where they want us to do. Look, I guess. And then go to desktop, which is the common location where we will look for stuff. I definitely cannot, you know, I, I just can't spell, you know. Um, and then type flag.txt. And there we have it, Xmas is safe. Go ahead and copy paste that, paste it in, and we're done. Now, I am no Active Directory Superman, you know, I this is, I'm as, I can be most shaky ground ever as before. This is, for me, really difficult to talk about and Sometimes the things you just understand basically because I was participating in a course in this past the hash, you know, and how it works. I guess we can probably go to the top and see where we that we have some sort of, you know, client login, pass the hash authorization, generate the certificate and so on and so on, but and I guess this is probably what we did somewhat with the exploit. In some way, we had a vulnerable user, a domain user, whatever, and then uh, we used that to generate, you know, particular login credentials and stuff like that. 
and then we saved somewhere on the server and used that and got ourselves access. All right, so I think this is for now the video that I will let you off with, and I really hope that you learned something nevertheless. And don't ask me questions about X directory. That is not a Christmas present for me. <laughs>